Perhaps one of the most powerful features of Autoplay Media Studio is the scripting language, and at the core of every scripting language is variables. In this case, we've got something called tables in the product too, which are arrays, that is 3D, three-dimensional variables. So we're just going to take a quick look at both of these. They're a lot easier than they sound. It's something like in junior high school when your teacher would say to you, A equals 1 and B equals 2. What is A plus B? And you would say 3. So it's very simple stuff, and we'll basically just dive right in. So if you don't see it already, go to View, Script Editor, and open your script editor up nice and wide like this by dragging the title just above the title bar, and click in there, and we're going to start right away by creating a variable. So in this case, we're going to create a string variable. and That means we're going to need quotation marks. So we're going to give a name to our variable. We're going to call it my name. And then we're going to say equals. And then in quotation marks, I'm going to type in my name. If you are assigning a numerical value, for example, my number, you would not type in the quotation marks. You would just type in the number. And that's the difference between string variables and numeric variables. In both cases, you notice I ended the line with a semicolon. It's important when you're scripting to end your lines with semicolons. Okay, so let's just jump right in and test this script. The way we usually test scripts, and especially if you want to display values partway through a test, is to use a dialog message. So what we're going to do is we're going to start typing the word dialog, and you'll notice there that the autocomplete function built into the script editor guessed that we were going to type dialog and it put that little word up there in the pop-up. If we would like to autocomplete, all we have to do is hit control space and it will type the rest of the word out for us. Um, if you would like to type it out longhand, you can though. I prefer to use the autocomplete. So we want a message dialog, so we'll put a period and then we'll start to type the word message and again here it's guessed the word for us, the autocomplete function. So I'm going to press control space and there's the core of our action there, dialog message. Now a dialog message accepts two arguments. We have to have the first argument for the title of the, the dialog. In this case I'm going to type in a quotation mark and then type in my title and another quotation mark. Okay, that'll be our string for our title. Then we're going to put in a comma and in this case since we're displaying a variable name as opposed to a complete string we're going to just put in the variable name with no quotation marks. So my name. Okay. Then we need to close off our brackets here and put a semicolon and we're going to preview our script. So let's press F5 and as you can see it's created a dialog message here or a message dialog and it's put my title which is what we typed in into the title bar and it's taken the, the result of our variable and it's inserted it here in the window for us. So let's press OK and then let's close down this application by right clicking and choosing exit and just to make it more convenient, let's add an application exit action after our dialog. So every time we test a value, it closes the application automatically for us. So we'll press enter to get a new line. And we will go ahead and start typing the word application. And you'll notice after two letters, it guesses what we were going to say. So we'll press control space, then a period. And as you can see, the uh, pop-up menu here has guessed that we're going to be adding an application exit action. Now you can use your mouse if you like to select the rest of the action from here or you can press return if it's already on the action that you wanted and it'll automatically add it to the script. So I've just pressed return there. And again we have to add brackets and a semicolon. Okay, So let's take a look at the script with the application exit in place. Again we've got the same dialog message but when we press OK it gets rid of the application for us. So it makes it easier to test values. Okay, let's take a look at tables. Basically, what we've got here with the um, variables is um, a two-dimensional table. Or if you like, a table is a three-dimensional variable. So let's create a table here instead of a name. And we'll call it my names. Okay? And we're going to use curly braces here. And we're going to enclose the word Corey within curly braces. Now we're going to add a comma and in quotation marks a new name. How about Ed? Again a comma and in quotation marks another name. Okay, And I'm going to add a couple names here. You can make this as long as you want but I'm just going to make it five names long. Okay, I've created a table here. So this is basically a single um, 
value, my names, that contain several values. All right? So if we go to the dialog message line here, we're going to have to change this variable to say my names because the variable my name no longer exists. And then we are going to have to use a pair of square braces and an index number inside there to decide which one of these names we would like to display. So for example, if I want to display the third name, Billy, I'm going to put a 3 in there. Now let's preview our project. Okay, as you can see here, it's indexed the third item and displayed it into the message box, that being Billy. If we wanted to add more than one value, we could concatenate those by creating a value up here, such as saying um, my name equals and then we'll take two names from the table and add them together and that's called concatenation so we would say my names one and two dots is a concatenation operator and say my names five oops wrong bracket and then if we change this value to be my name so basically what we've done here is we've created a variable that takes two of the values from the table and adds them together. And now we've put back that variable into the dialog message. Now if we run this, you'll see it's added them together. I didn't add a space. I probably should have added a space in between there. But you can see what I've done is I've taken two items from the index and added them together. That's called concatenation. Okay, so basically there's a whole set of actions that come along with tables and with variables. But we've got a basic introduction to them here. What we're going to do, just to end off this uh, particular lesson, is we're going to take a look at numerical va variables really quick. Okay, so we've looked at string variables only. Numerical variables act similarly, but a little bit different. So let's assign a null value to our C variable to make sure that it's initialized. Okay, and then for our A variable, let's assign a value of 2. And for our B variable, Let's assign a value of 4. Okay, now, in our dialog message, we want to display the value of C because we're going to create a, an equation above here. So where it says my name, let's go ahead and change that to C. Okay? And then we're going to create in this line here an equation. For example, C equals A plus B. Okay, so this is pretty simple stuff like we all basically probably learned in junior high school. Now let's preview what happens here. Okay, so it's taken the value of A and the value of B, 2 and 4, it's added it together, it's assigned that value to a variable named C, and then it's displayed that into the message dialog. So this is an introduction to variables and tables, and I hope you guys have found this stuff useful and easy to understand because it's very powerful and it's going to be at the core of most scripting that we do. The, ta the tables are actually highly manipulatable. You can, you can do a lot of things with them and it's a great way to store sets of information and access that information dynamically at runtime. Okay, let's move ahead to the next lesson.